Let's talk about the lab write-up for the density lab. And I did give you a sheet of paper, and on one side it has what I want you to do essentially for the calculation. So I think it's the front side. The front side deals with the calculations portion, and then at the bottom here it has conclusions. On the opposite side of the sheet, you have a, a rubric that I made so that you can see how I will grade this lab. Uh, and it has the point breakdown toward 20 points, and I will give you a week to complete it. Avery, you might want to finish before you leave, or at least hand it in before then. I mean, it won't take very long to do it. Um, but each day that it's late, I'm going to take 25% off. So five points each day. So I mean, you're given a week. You can always turn it in early. So today is what? Tuesday. Tuesday. So if we meet next Tuesday, then it's due Tuesday. If we don't meet on Tuesday, then it's due the next day that we meet. Okay. Next Tuesday is Tuesday. So we don't meet. Or do we meet? We do meet. So it is due on Tuesday. Okay. So I'll always give you a week. Um, don't come to me, say, Tuesday morning next week and say, what do I do? All right. So you can ask questions between now and then. You can email me. You can text me, all that fun stuff. Um, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory, I hope. And I'm going to go ahead and go over this. So here's the rubric, and that is located on the website if you need to find it again if you lose this. So let's talk about the calculations. Okay. The calculations, as it says on here, should be done with pencil by hand. Okay, so you'll either get some nice line paper or some computer paper, I don't care which, just do it neatly. You'll do the following calculations for each solid type. So you are given, you, you have your data table, at least I hope you still have your data table. Um, you'll take your data table and it has on here the instructions as to what type of calculations I need for you to do. And I would dare say that um, one through four doesn't require a calculator, okay? but use it just to make sure. Um, five and six probably requires a calculator because you'll find the average of the two, and then you'll actually calculate the density. Okay? So one through seven, I'll let you take a look at on your own. I don't think I need to explain it. If you read it carefully enough, it should be self-explanatory. Um, once you have the density, then it's asking for the percent error. So whatever you get as your data or your result for the density, that's the lab value. Okay. So what you get is the lab value. The true value, I actually found the values below. So they're right here. You can plug those values into the true. So this, what do these vertical lines here represent? Absolute value. Absolute value. So if you get a negative, just drop the negative, just like when we were taking the difference in electronegativity like electronegative values, if it's negative, drop it, and then divide it by the true, multiply by 100. Now you give you a percent. So these are fairly simple calculations, and it's worth over 25% of your lab. Okay, So be neat, be orderly um, when doing this. The conclusions section. Okay, In the conclusions, what I want you to do is write neatly. Actually, you're going to type this part, so scratch that off at least a paragraph discussing why water displacement was the best way to find the volume. In other words, I can't think of any solid that was actually easy to measure with, say, a ruler, a yardstick, or whatever. So talk about why water displacement was the best way that we could have used okay, um, to measure these objects. So, and again, this is going to give you a chance to write. Some of you love writing. In a different paragraph, discuss two sources of error okay, that could have contributed to your data not giving you exactly these density values. All right? And if you somehow, some way, get those exact values, I guarantee you the other two trials won't be exact. And if they are, then I'm smelling something fishy there. So when we talk about sources of error, things that you should not talk about or cannot talk about, the ineptness of your partner, okay? I just had a stupid partner, okay? Um, you, can't, you can't make mistakes on purpose, all right? So like when I uh, went to go measure the volume 
or when I measured the mass, I made sure I put my thumb on the scale with the graduate. You can't make up stuff, all right? There are things that you could have done that are important, like what should you have done before you put it on the balance? Re-zero there or cleared it, okay? Because I even saw somebody do this. They came and wiped something off of the balance before, and I was like, don't do that. What was on the balance for some of you? Water. Water, okay. So sometimes if you didn't re-zero it, there was some water already on there. Also, when we were looking at the graduated cylinders, now this isn't the same one, but I hope it has a base on it. Okay. This is a smaller version. But when you were working with this, did any of you know that this came off? No. Okay. And what's really suspicious is water easily gets trapped in this. So whenever you get water on the outside of the graduated cylinder, it pools up on the inside. Okay, so that could contribute some mass. What's another source of error? If the water splashed out. Uh, if the water splashed out, you should have started over. <laughs> What's another one? A valid one. Think about when you're reading it. Because I saw I saw some very interesting Yeah, not knowing how to read it or I mean it was a really Eh, not well marked graduated cylinder, so maybe you may have read above the meniscus instead of below the meniscus. A lot of good things there. So if you cite that as a source of error, tell me why it's a source of error. Okay, just don't say, uh, had extra water on the balance. Okay, why is that a source of error? Be sure to explain why. Okay, and I think not on this one, but on the explanation I said to explain that. Yeah, so, and I have some notes at the bottom on the rubric here. I have some things here that these are the most common mistakes that I've seen over the years, so it just keeps piling up. Again, make sure you listen to the instructions carefully. Actually, I'm going to put this online, so if you need to watch it again, that's fine. Make sure you're showing all units for your calculations, like if you're working with mass it should be in grams what should our volume be milliliters because we use a graduated cylinder uh, make sure you're showing all your steps including the labels even if it's simple math show the process don't just write down numbers that you can easily do in your head you always want to document everything that you're doing um, explain your conclusion statement okay in other words your source of error that i had on you talk about there just don't state that it's an error an error not error that we breathe, but don't just state why it's error. Tell me why it's an error. How it could have contributed to uh, your density not being correct. Uh, don't handwrite anything in your type section of the lab. The only thing that should be handwritten is a calculations page, and it'll be separate from your other thing. Also, this is this really bothers me, especially when you're doing formal writing. It's not formal, but it's definitely not texting or talking to your friends, okay? So don't use texting language slang like BC. I see this more than I really appreciate. Because, because, yeah, don't, don't. No. Yeah. yeah, so when you, when you write, right, yeah. There, there's an infinite number of writing. I will. All right, now, some of you are wondering, I can do that. Okay, on the website, on the website, I do have a template that you can use. So again, obviously go to the chemistry website. And if you don't have Word at home or you don't have access to a computer here at school, I don't know why you wouldn't, but hopefully you could. Come down here where it says general chemistry lab stuff, right above the uh, chicken hawk. Okay, click on that. Is that an Oreo? Is that the chicken yeah, part? that ain't an Oreo. So, and then, it, right at the top there, it says lab template for Microsoft Word. Click on that. Open it up. Okay, and it's just a template. Open up. That's it. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here's the template. And so you can fill in the information here. Make sure that you actually give me the title for your lab. Dead City Lab. And if... If you look on the data sheet, it actually has this, 
It has this. It has this. So all you have to do is retype it. Okay. So the way you do it is to take your cursor, put it right in the box, and just start typing. Okay. <laughs> so it'll expand if you need to. Okay. Um, the procedure again is given to you. It's on the lab explanation sheet. What do you think you're going to put in the results section? No calculations. Observations. Not observations. Wait, what are we saying? Results. What are you going to put in the results section? No. In other words, the results. What, like the correct thing to happen, like, um, how do I phrase this? Like, what actually Let's happened? Like, not their actual numbers, but. Look at that guy. What did it say? What did you say? Yeah, in other words, the results would always answer the question. In other words, the what is the first one? The purpose. It always answers the purpose. So you're looking for the density. So your three solids, and he just read it off the rubric. So you'll put whatever you used, so brass rods, you'll put the density. You're only putting three things in there. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay? And you can type those out. That's fine. Conclusions, this is where you'll have your um, sources of error and you'll explain the water displacement. Okay? Get that typed up, print that off, turn it in with your calculations. Make sure you also turn in your data sheet with my signatures because you'll notice that that's worth some points as well. Um, and actually turn this in so I don't have to reprint it and I'll use this as the grading sheet or the rubric. So don't lose this. So turn the sheet in with your lab. Okay? And we get no time and cost for this? You don't need it. Yeah. If you need time in SRT, you can come in and ask. Yeah.